Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Vampires seem to lurk behind every corner of popular culture these days, but the Carolina Ballet has decided to go back to the original vampire, Dracula, for a Halloween season ballet that will leave you thirsty for more. When asked by Carolina Ballet's artistic director, Robert Weiss, to choreograph Dracula, Lynn Taylor Corbett knew where to turn. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm using a lot of text, and I'm adapting the story. So Alan Campbell, who's a fine Broadway actor, is playing Dr. Seward, and he is essentially serves as a narrator. Because the story is so complex, um, if you don't oversimplify it, that it's just delicious to have language interspersed. So. You, you follow the ins and outs, because it's really about fear. It's, it's about people not knowing what's wrong, and they don't really find out that it's Dracula until two-thirds of the way through. They don't know it's even a vampire. And so the sort of fun for me is um, that the audience knows more than the characters. But the music also has to inform the audience. Well, to, if we're going to go back to the book, we have to have a feeling for the audience that, that tells them a, it's, it's not the 21st century, it's the 19th, and it's not in our part of the world. It's in Eastern Europe somewhere. So there's a Hungarian hammered dulcimer that once the audience hears that, it's going to take them back to the 19th century and Transylvania faster than, than really, I think, anything. So I built the orchestra around that. Though they had never collaborated before, Mark and Lynn found that they worked well together. Because I'm a theater director, I decided that if I could mix narration and make it more cinematic. In other words, instead of it five big scenes like ballets, you know, they usually take place in these big scenes that begin and end, that I would flow more like a, a you know, a, a movie. So it's challenging both to myself, to the composer, because it's easier to write a beginning, middle, and end, you know, beginning, middle, and end, and, and to try to make a score like a movie score. As a matter of fact, we, um, shared a lot of movie scores that we admire because we agreed that it had to be an unusual approach. Mark showed us how one brief passage worked. Well, this is the moment in Dracula where uh, he's at the castle, in Dracula's castle, and this is the young lawyer, Harker, who's just come to Transylvania, and uh, he goes up to shave before the elegant meal they're going to have that night. And you can see it's scored very lightly. It's just a solo violin, and that Hungarian hammer dulcimer, just doing kind of sounds like Bach, though disturbed. And then the thing I wanted to point out is that here's just one moment, one bar of silence. And these four beats of silence say more dramatically than much of the busiest pages in the score. What happens here? As the young lawyer Harker cuts himself shaving, Dracula smells the blood, approaches him. We don't see Dracula's reflection in the shaving mirror. And in that four beats of silence, the audience gets all of that. And we know somebody's going to get bit. <laughs> Both artists agree that the character of Dracula can be a metaphor. I mean, he invented the perfect breakthrough character, and that character you could distance yourself from it because he was bad, but he really embodied a lot of the fantasies that that um, men and women were having around that Victorian period that, that people couldn't give voice to at all. But it's an interesting transformation. I mean, uh, a person is depleted and then sucks the blood of someone else and is reborn. In this way, it's like the artist. We seek inspiration. Once we fill ourselves with inspiration, which is an external factor, a kind of blood, we are transformed as artists and we do create a thing that is beyond human. Dracula and the Mask of the Red Death runs October 13th through the 30th at the Fletcher Opera Theater in Raleigh. Tickets may be purchased online or by calling the ballet line. For more information, go to carolinaballet.com, and if you happen to go to the ballet over the weekend of Halloween, be sure to wear a costume. 
podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.